Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Krista Tur Bible Study. Uh, again, there's no one here. And really, it's snow on the ground. It's, mm. uh, God bless you. God keep you. Uh, I said I need to back up because my voice is loud. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm real loud. Uh, but God bless you. I pray for your family to be safe uh, here in Louisville, Kentucky. It's a storm and the snow's out. It's not real bad storm, but uh, it's a little couple of inches of snow and the temperature's like eight degrees. And uh, I've been out in it, so yes, it's cold. But I threw on my big fur monkey coat. Not a real fur, it's fake fur. <laughs> for you pizza people out there, P-I-T-A. It's not real fur. I didn't kill no animals. No one killed any animals. So anyway, God bless you, Bible study. And as I said, I'm winging it because I've been practicing. Like I was going to write it down, write it down. It's going to be called Shut Up Jesus. And I was going to write, I was going to write. But I did now. I did homework. I did. I gathered up some things, information. And I'm on fire right now because my cousin revealed some things to me about a dentist, that a dentist uh, organization that has been taking money from people. Uh, just... You know who it is, the poor people, taking advantage of poor people, giving them unneeded dental treatments. So, oh, my God. So I'm really like, oh, I'm angry. So mm, so that's why I said, let me not keep focusing on that. It's on my Facebook page and I placed it on Twitter. So uh, I've been getting a lot of people friending me for that because I'm like, I got it from my cousin, Ashanti. I told you I love her. She be woo. I told her she be giving me the truth. She keeps me on point. She be telling me what's going on. <laughs> As you see, I'm like, oh my God. I was like, what? But I didn't trust that place. But anyway, let me get back to God's work. So, oh God, it's been so real. It's been wonderful. Uh, uh, let me say, I want to get straight to the word. And after I do the word, then I get into the, the, today's activities. Uh, uh, we will be, be uh, we will we will uh, be coming from 1 Samuel 3. I was going to do 3 through 8, but I'm, let me give you the uh, the whole story. Because I'm throwing stuff out there because everybody don't know the Bible, including me. You know what I'm saying? So let's get deep into it. Uh, now, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord, NIV version. Uh, now, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. Verse 2. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. 3. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Four. Then the Lord called Samuel and he said, here I am and ran to Eli and here and, and said, here I am for you called me. Samuel thought that Eli called him. So he ran to Eli. But he said, Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and he lay down. Verse six. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Verse 8. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord... The Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Verse 10. And the Lord came and stood. I don't think the Lord came and stood, but we'll get deep with that another day. But And the Lord came and stood calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel, let me go back to that. Let me go back and because uh, God said, go back because I'm not going to give you the word. I'm going to give you what God's telling me. That, let's go back with that. And the Lord came and stood. I'm quite sure I believe this might be uh, translated through Greek, 
but at that time stood probably meant that his presence was there. I, I'm just going to throw it out there because we know that uh, we doubt that God actually came. We know he didn't see God. So he so stood, came and stood. This, that's why I really don't like dealing with the uh, NIV. The King James is complicated, but especially for people that's new in Christ and beginning to read the Bible, things like this throw you off because then you got to run around trying to figure out what it means. But I'm quite sure when it says he stood, God's presence was there because Aramic and uh, Greek back then, those languages, when they translated them over, everything means something different. You know, uh, the, uh, we got di we have different meanings. So anyway, then the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel. Woo. At which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. Stop. OK, because my point was, let's go back here. Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant here. So Samuel went and he lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood, calling as other times, Samuel, Samuel. Oh, Lord Jesus. And like I said, shut up, Jesus. Just like Samuel. I know my voice is probably extra loud because this computer is, is louder than my other ones, which is fantastic. I'm not complaining. But uh, the Lord back then, and this is the Old Testament. Sure, it's Old Testament Eli, the priest. When God, God spoke to people often, he speaks to people now, but when he was speaking to him, he called out his name. And what I want to deal with is God speaking to you and calling you and, and telling you things. And it's not an audible voice, meaning that you not you can't you can't just hear it. It's not loud where everybody can hear it. It's a voice, it's his voice where it speaks to your spirit, he speaks to your soul, he speaks to your inner being. And uh that's what he does to me. And he has been doing that all my life. It's just that I never answered him. God forgive me, I'm not laughing or playing anything like that, but I I'm laughing. Not laughing at a, oh, I'm laughing at God. Never get that twisted. I'm laughing because I was so hard-headed and I missed so much of my life being disobedient and not wanting to hear him. But God, I always hear God telling me, do this, do this. You know, Janice, go do this. Don't go that way. Don't do this. Don't, don't take that drink. Uh, don't get in that car. Don't talk to that person. You know, get in that relationship. Now, nah, I'll take a couple of drinks. I didn't hear nothing. Believe in nothing that I wanted. I didn't hear the Lord. So I would drink and I would drown out him talking to me. And so thus, that's why I get shut up Jesus. Um, most of my, all my life, I was that way. You know, God had always been trying to talk to me through, through different things, you know, different avenues. And quite often he was really physically, he would just say it. I would hear him deep, had loudly in my spirit, just like the little boy Samuel. He heard him, you know. It, it was as though it was in the other room. That's how God's voice is often. It's like somebody, I heard somebody calling my name. I'm quite sure many of you it sound like you heard somebody calling your name and you turn around and you don't see anybody. It's like, wow. You know, and I'm not saying all the time that that's God, but I know uh, in my life often it is God trying to tell me, don't take this direction. I take this direction. And so with uh, that being said, uh, I looked up some things online when I, because, you know, I said I wanted to come to you about uh, Shut Up Jesus. When I looked online, it was talking about how a dog, what is it, like 20,000 decibels or whatever, a dog can hear a sound that we can't hear, a human person can't hear. It's also something about, I didn't look at that up, but I recall that it's something about dolphins. Dolphins can hear a sound that humans can't hear. You know, their ears is that, that, that is so sensitive and stimulating. And let's go deeper. Also, uh, I, I uploaded a tape not long ago about the little boy who was blind and he clicks with his mouth. He passed on now, but, you know, but uh, he didn't have any eyes. He was blind, but he learned to see with his uh, with a clicking sound so he could tell where everything was. You know, he'd shoot ball and, and uh, skate in the street and everything like that. 
And uh, so what I was saying is that there are sounds that everybody can't hear. There are sounds that and words and voices that are spoken not verbally loud where everyone can hear, but often spoken to the soul and to the spirit. And that's how God speaks to me. And uh, that's why here lately in my life, I want to say, shut up, Jesus. And uh, it's not to be cruel, but here it goes. Lord Jesus, shut up. Shut up. Because you keep talking. You keep talking and you want me to tell people to change their lives, to obey you, to turn to you. They're not listening. They're not listening. I didn't want to listen. That's why I went astray and I did my drinking. So shut up. They don't want to listen to you. They don't believe in heaven and hell. They don't believe those things. They think those things are the old, the old days. They think that's something that's, that's frivolous. They don't believe you. They don't believe in you. They too busy going to church and want to get their praise on and get their dance on. They want to get satisfied physically. They don't want to get satisfied spiritually. Being satisfied spiritually would be that they know you, that you are their fulfillment, that you are their joy. But no, they don't want that. So shut up, shut up, shut up. They don't want to hear you. They don't want to hear nothing that I have to say. They don't want to hear people telling them to change your life. That the way you live in can cause death, not just to you, but to your family members too. Curses on your family's head. They don't believe that. They don't want to hear that. And while I'm at it, what really, really, truly made me get to this point and want to start this conversation about Shut Up Jesus is um, on my Facebook page. A guy got on there, I uh, believe it was last week, week or so ago, and uh, he was talking about, uh, he wasn't on my page. Now, he put a lady that's on my page, on my Facebook page, she posted it. And what he said was, Fake Christians, fake church. That's basically what he was talking about. And I started to address it, but then I backed down, just like I said, because I'm like, shut up, Jesus, <laughs> shut up. Because if I say something, he's going to say something back, and he's going to be quick to want to quote some scripture. And uh, the same thing, I, I had read that story. I didn't respond because uh, they was talking about this man said something about a truck. He did go five when he said a hand took and picked the truck back up. But before that, I was with him. <laughs> Where a guy can come in and he'll intercede before you run into a brick wall before a car go off a road. So yeah, I've been there, but he got to say something else. But I, I, I uh, gave him a like for his belief and his faith. But lo and behold, he there was people out there that said, "Well, so if you saying that God saved you, and the same thing with the guy that said fake church and fake fake uh Christians." Basically, what they both were saying is that if God saved you from an accident, why did he kill others? Why did God allow all those people to be shot in that building, uh, the, the guy that did the shooting in Vegas? Why does God allow that? Why does he kill some people and he saved us? So he saved you, but he let the others die. So they quick to hurry up and say that. I had an answer. I had an answer, but no, I didn't get into it because... Some people want to bait you like that and pull you in so you could get on Facebook or you get on Twitter or social media and start arguing with them. And then a whole lot of words and things I, I, I start beginning to get said and some threats. And then people get to, you know, get put off of Facebook, or off of social media. So I didn't go there, but I can go there now. Uh, to me, and it's not me. Uh, oh, let me go better. Let me go better because I did. I did pull it up. 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 Oh, my God. I was trying to find out my notes, and I, I have to figure out how to, uh, oh, my God. Let me see. Uh, anyway, I'm going to paraphrase. 
because I don't want to keep you long and I don't like being long winded because I have all, I want you to uh, hear about the day, uh, today's events. But uh, anyway, and I'm sorry, please forgive me for not being on point, but because I'm locked in the house and I can't get out <laughs> and I can't drive nowhere and God been telling me do it. And so look, I got to be obedient because I want to uh, start driving again. So hello. So, uh, okay, as of now, okay, here I am. So let me paraphrase. So anyway, I was going to pull up Job, you know, because I, 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 all this morning and stuff like that, because God's telling me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to toss and play it out. I'm trying to listen to some music. God, like, okay, what you supposed to do? So believe me. So I had things pulled up. So anyway, uh, and I didn't want to, it's good time is going bad, and I didn't want to get late because I always said I want to upload between, uh, before 8 o'clock. 6.30, 7 o'clock, because like I said, if I physically had the Bible meeting and people were here, it would definitely be, uh, bad, you know, 7 o'clock. So I want to have everything uploaded by then. But um, anyway, uh, that's a little soda, but uh, I had to have a little sip. <clears throat> anyway. I did look up some things and uh, to address the issue of the people that don't believe in God, that think that the church is all the churches are fake. There are some fake churches and some fake Christians, just like there's fake and all that everywhere. And, and there are a lot of people that are uh, pimping Christ, for a better word. Let's keep it real. Uh, and they're doing it for money. They're in the. Uh, they're into to the uh they're into God for money. They use people for money. Let's keep it real. I'm not gonna come to you fake. Let's keep it real. So I understand that. But when a person said gets on Facebook or social media and they start, you know, down a guy, that's why I said shut up, God, because don't nobody want to listen. They're not even scared of you. Cause it's, he's bold to me. You bold to go on there and say that about oh fake God, fake Christian. Used to be a time you didn't talk about pastors. You didn't talk about the church or nothing like that. God forbid, whoa. Lord have mercy. Boy, we said something. I bet we said something about a pastor. Oh, my God. Boy, my mama hit you so fast. You don't even know what you, you had to figure out. What did I say? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then when you did figure out what you said, you know you didn't say it no more. You know, uh, we don't treat uh, we don't treat the pastors with holiness. But it's not it's not uh, our fault. It's their fault. Because of the things that they do. Laying with other women, sleeping with church members, having sex with children in the church. I mean, so they brought that on themselves. That's why people don't have trust in them. That's why God is angry. You know, preach Christ crucified. Preach Christ risen. I are you preaching Christ dead? So anyway. When, to address the issue when people say fake church, fake Christian, and why God uh, saved you because saved you you're a Christian, and yet he let these other people die. And then it came to me, let's say God brought it to me. <laughs> and he said, remember when Job, anybody that's familiar, and if you don't know Job, Job was a man who had a family. He was rich. He had a whole lot of things. And so the devil came to God. Which God created the devil. Anybody keep on all this bull. God created everything. Then you know he created the devil. He's got more power than him. He's just letting the devil get away with a little stuff. He just got a little competition. He got everything he wanted. He created everybody. He's got a, He's like playing chess against himself. So he got tired of it. So hello. He, all right. Bring this little. Anyway. So the Satan came to God and he said, hey. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, you got this little servant and he's he's worshiping you and he's got all this property and all this thing. He said, but if I took those things from him, I bet he would curse you out. And uh, God said, nah, he's not going to do that because I trust him. And just Satan said, mm -hmm, I bet you, I bet you'll curse you out if he was sick and he lost all them nice things that he had. Look at all his family. He got everything. He don't need a one for nothing. And so Satan kept on talking and God said, test him, test him. He said, but don't kill him. Do anything you want to him, but don't kill him. And so he went on with, okay, I heard y'all. Oh, my God. That's so cruel. Why would he do that? Why would he let that man suffer like that? What kind of God would do that? Anyway, let me finish. A good God. So let me finish. And so he tested. So the Satan came. He tested him. He killed off his children. 
He took all his property, his land. He made him sick. He had boils on his body. He was stinking and all that stuff like that. Yet, yet, Job did not cuss the Lord. He said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Why should I love the Lord when everything's going good? But then when things are bad, I turn my back on him. I'm paraphrasing everything, but it's my favorite book of the Bible. My cousin Tony used to always tell me, it would just make me tremble, but it's my favorite book of the Bible. And uh, so anyway, so finally, after everything was taken, Job's wife, she came to him and told him he should cuss the Lord out and die, and he refused. So he had three so-called friends. Woo! Be careful them friends, which they came to him and was telling him that he must have did something wrong. You know them friends. And uh, so basically they weren't no good friends, but they came and basically tried to condemn him while he was suffering. So anyway, Job just said, told the Lord, he said, why don't you just kill me? You letting all this happen to me because you got to be aware now. Job didn't know that he was a, he was being a, a little pine for the Lord. He didn't know that God let the devil tempt him. He didn't know that he was going to live. He thought, and this man, he's thinking, I'm going to suffer. Everything's gone and I'm going to die. He didn't know. See, God knew what he was going to bring him out of. God knows what he's going to bring us out of. My voice cracking like I don't know. God knows. The, the future. I'm going to go this way because I want to uh, detour from the fact. I want to get off point. I want to stay on point. Anyway, God knows what's going to happen. And, but Job didn't know. So I, he's thinking about, okay, I'm suffering. Everything's gone. I'm going to die. But I love the Lord because he gave me, took care of me. He was my friend. He talked to me everything like that. I heard him speak to my spirit. So shut up, Lord. Shut up, Jesus. So, which this is not Jesus at the time. Jesus wasn't born. This is God. Okay, I got that much about the history. So, God, this, this time it's God. Uh, so, anyway, uh, so Job ends up, uh, God ended up uh, giving, restoring everything that was taken. He, he didn't kill the wife, which is strange, but hello, we're not being evil. <laughs> he didn't kill his wife. He left her around because she was bitter anyway and angry. So you can imagine he's laying down and he's sitting in the living room and, and uh, putting ashes and stuff on the sores. And, you know, she's sitting there, look at you, stinking and stuff like that. And you don't want to cuss the Lord out. Look what he did to you. He done took all our kids and stuff that I gave birth to. I brought them kids into the world and you let him take them. Look at him. Therefore, that's a good sign to pick you a mate that believes what you believe and has strong faith, hopefully, because just imagine, you know, I don't know, but he kept her after all that. So hello. So anyway, God restored everything that was taken from him. So before, let me go back before he, God gave him everything that had that had been taken because I don't want I'm losing point. I'm going to stay on point. OK, before God gave him back everything, restored to him his goods and his family and children. Job said, Lord, why don't you just kill me? And all of a sudden, that's when it says, and God spoke. Woo! And God spoke. <laughs> oh, yeah. He spoke to his soul. He spoke to his spirit. And I'm quite sure at that time, God was audible. <laughs> but uh, Job was the one in, 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 the, in the presence of the Lord at that time. And God told him, he said, where were you when I created this world? I'm paraphrasing, but he said, where were you when I created the world? When I laid the foundations of the world, when I begat man and then turned around and begat woman, where were you at? Where were you at? You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to get too deep with that, but hello, that's the point. And then what I suggest and what I want to say to people, I don't say it because I don't want to argue because some people just want to argue. My thing is this. God says it's according to your belief. And your faith, what you want to believe. If you choose to believe that churches are fake or whatever, that's you. But my choice is that I believe in God and I believe I can have life abundant through him. I believe that he created the heavens and the earth. I believe Christ crucified, Christ risen. I believe that. I have a right to believe what I want to believe. And that's what I want to believe. And when I believe it, I believe in God because he has spoken to me. He has taken care of me. He has done things for me that no man, no human being could do and will do for me. He can come for me when I can't even open my mouth and tell how much pain I'm in mentally or physically. But he knows. 
And even though he knows sometimes I got to verbalize it, not to everybody else, because they go, oh, look at you. Who look, you know, you love the Lord. And you say I can verbalize it to him. And when I verbalize it to him, he can soothe me. He comforts me and he tells me that he loves me and he cares about me. And with my walk with God now, when I'm doing something right, he says, I'm proud of you. I don't care what you say, but that's what he tells me. I'm proud of you. Perfect example of how my God operates. If you don't want to believe, that's your thing. But I choose to believe in God. I choose to believe in Jesus Christ. And this is the difference between me and you. Yeah, he does allow some people to die and he have others to live. Why? I don't know why. I just know that I thank God that I'm here. And because I believe in him, I believe that it makes it better for my family. <sighs> it's eight degrees outside. And uh, cold. So uh, a friend of mine, he took me so I could find me some shoes. But didn't nobody have any snowshoes and everything like that. So I have boots. But it's snow on the ground, as I said. So I'm thinking I, I want to get out of here. I got to get out of here. I got to go take care of some business on the bus. So what am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? I don't have no whole lot of friends. I don't have no bad with transportation. Like I said, where I live, you know what I'm saying? I thank God I got a place to live. But where I live, it's off the road. So it's like the country roads and stuff like that. You know, it's difficult to get in here. And when you come out, you got to walk a good distance. And you're going to walk in the street to get where you're going. So. I'm thinking like, you know, oh, Lord, when am I? I didn't say, oh, Lord, when am I going to do? I'm in my head then. Like, what am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? Because the other day when I went to church, I put some plastic over the outside of my boots and my feet still got wet. And then when I left the church walking, people rolled past me. I don't know if they were church members or not, but people rolled past me and I almost splattered water on me because I had to walk near the street. So, you know, <laughs> enough said there. So, as I was thinking, calmly. Calmly soothing, like velvet. I heard him say, Put the plastic over your feet. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yes, that's how it really is. Put the plastic over your feet, Janice, and put your feet in the boots, and your feet won't get wet. Hello, because I know some people out there are like, duh, duh. We are, well, good for you. I didn't. I'm, 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 usually, I'm used to driving a car. Hello, I'm used to driving a car. I, I asked about uh, for the weather, I'm used to having shoes. But I get in the habit of giving things away to people so much until I forgive, I forgive things away that I end up needing. I gave my coat away, and then I'm turning around trying to figure out, like, oh, God, where is my coat? So I had to put on my big fake fur. But... Anyway, that's how God speaks to me. That's how I know he's real. I wouldn't have something that I can't feel sometimes. And God tells me to test him. So I've tested him. So where are you going on your journey and your beliefs and some people, why are these people dying out of that? All I could say to you is believe what you want to believe. But if you want to believe what I believe, not how I believe, but if you want to believe in the God that I serve, if you want to believe in Jesus, Call him, test him, ask him, why, God, did you allow those people in Vegas to get killed? Why did you allow Pharaoh to drown in the water? Because when you're going into that, baby, baby, go real deep with that. Think about the times when God saved people from Rome. Yeah, he killed a whole lot of people, but think about how many times he protected people. So, I mean, <laughs> duh. You know, that's all I can say is, duh. I, I mean, I used to question God because I'm I'm inquisitive. Uh, I was that way, shut up, Jesus. That's why I always say, shut, shut up, Jesus. I don't say it now. Wait a minute. Don't get it twisted. I don't say shut up, Jesus. I'm just saying it right now, shut up, Jesus, because he'll strike you. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, for real. You thinking he killed everybody? Believe that. He'll kill a person, too. Think you're a Christian. He killed Christians, too. But, uh. Oh, Lord Jesus, I almost lost my point. But uh, like I said, uh, I, I question God. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I question God. You know, I ask God, you know, why this, why that? You know, like a perfect example. I'm like, why am I riding the bus? My cars are, you know what I'm saying? Enemies running around. People that do wrong and all that. Why am I? And you know what he told me? Because I said so. Basically, <laughs> because he said so. Because it's a lesson. 
I'm learning, and I have learned some things since I've been sitting here because I don't like being cooped in. You know what I'm saying? Which, like I said, I got out and caught that bus today. But uh, he's teaching me things. Like for one thing, like this right now, it's staying on point because I procrastinate. I'm always, I start projects and I don't finish them. And that's why I don't have people that follow me. That's why it's not a lot of people over here too that will come through the snow. Really, I haven't put the word our way after. I'm just basically doing a lot of Facebook stuff. But you know what I'm saying? You got to be faithful. And like I said, I've been, believe me, I'm not, look at me. I'm getting relaxed. I'm getting relaxed. <laughs> Woo, shut up, Jesus. Because the Lord just said, you're lying. <laughs> See, y'all didn't hear him. You, did you hear him? Did y'all hear him? Shh. See, you didn't hear him, but I heard him. He said, you're lying. And I was lying. Uh, he told me, he said, you better sit down and do what I told you to do. And so I was sitting here last night. And uh, and you, I'm trying to clean up, run around, do something. You know, I'm always trying to play it off. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to sit down and study the word. Thank God for the pastor. At the church, I probably won't be going back to church. I'm not going this Wednesday, but I probably won't be returning to church anymore. But anyway, I was sitting here and, uh, you know, in my little meditating every now and then, you know, I go into a little deep thought. And so God was like Ralph Cramden. So because I always watch, I watch the honeymoons. I, like I said, I watch the little things that make me laugh. I try not to watch all that stuff that disturb my spirit. So I was listening to Ralph Cramden. Anyway, long story short. He was talking about succeeding, being successful, because you probably don't know the Cramblers. But anyway, this guy told him how he got riches. He sat down and he wrote about his weaknesses and he wrote about his strength. He made a list of his strengths and his weaknesses. And then everything that was his weakness, he said he got rid of because the guy ended up owning a donut shop. And so he got rid of all of his weaknesses and he built up his strengths. You know, and that's why I said, see, you got to know him for yourself. You got to know Jesus. You got to know God for yourself. Don't let nobody tell I don't have my mama's God. Lord, no, I don't have my mama's God. Not that her God was bad because if it was not for my mother, I would not know God as I know him because my mother pushed me in church. My mother kept me around church and around church people. So I thank God for that. I thank God for my mother doing that. But. You have to know God for yourself. Don't let somebody. I think that's why people get to the point where they start hating God and they hate church people and they hate Christians in particular is because they hear other people talk and they see pastors sleeping with members of the church. They see the pastor that just did the dope thing. What did he do? Uh, I don't call that his name, you know, and then we couple of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, one of them having sex with the member, and I think the member's still in the church, and he got babies with her, and his wife, he got, you know, twins, hello. You know, you got a dude that's supposed to be a prophet that turned around, and they busted him out and said he was getting a, a information from somebody else, and then acting like God spoke it to him. Oh, I, I'm not angry with you. I'm not angry with you for damn God. I'm not angry with you for hating God, because I understand that somebody fed and you see you see so many things you don't have anybody positive and godly to come back and say hey yeah people do wrong yeah pastors mess up yeah there's a lot of church people and churches that are corrupt and do corrupt things but seeking ye shall find knocking the door should be open go find another church if that church is not working go find another church get around some godly people and ask them and nowadays you don't even have to go into the church you don't have first of all you don't have to go to church let's get deep with that you don't even have to go to church a lot of people are hurry up and want to tell you that do not forsake gathering of yourself which means you can gather in a house you can gather in a restaurant anywhere as long as you you, you getting together and talk about god or you getting together to, yeah you're talking about god because i ain't gonna say positive because some people get together for dirt anyway let me get back to my point because i don't want to get too long-winded anyway but to be successful he told him to do your weaknesses and your strength and so like i said i looked at my i wrote down a list i looked at my weaknesses Believe me, when God set you down, he set you down, so you better listen. I choose to listen. And the point I was making before I go back to this lesson is that, like I said, you got to know God for yourself. And like I said, you see how he pointed me in this direction. He talked about Ralph Cramden and then told me, look at it. And I looked at it in the particular story. I looked at TDJ said nothing, absolutely nothing in God's world happens by mistake. And anyway, one of mine is 
uh, procrastinating. That's one of my weaknesses. I doubt in myself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, antisocial. A lot of times I'm not really antisocial, but fact, uh, anyway, a lot of times I don't want to be around people that's gossiping and putting, that's putting people down. But I have friends like a couple of ladies in church in particular, yeah, that I speak to and stuff like that in church. So I started getting to, you know, know people. We don't call each other on the phone. Me and the other chick, one chick does. We did a couple of times. But other than that, you know, they have my number. Don't know about Kyle. So, you know, I don't push things because sometimes God, you know, he's closing the door on it. But uh, one of the great things that I looked at, God worked on me about. And he revealed to me with my hard head self. The reason the car keeps breaking down is because he told me to stop driving it. But Mr. Hey, I'm going to fix it. And they trying to get on God saying, you told me to take care of what I got. He didn't tell me that. He told me to have faith. So I should have been having me a better car. So that's on me. Hello. So, yeah, some of my strength is uh, I'm a great conversationist. You know what I'm saying? I try to keep my parents up. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I love taking care of people. I help people out. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I'm obedient to God. Majority, you know, <laughs> I'm not lying. I'm obedient. I'm obedient. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a tither. So I looked at, you know, a lot of my good points, you know, and I, I'm going to finish the, the uh, list. I have a lot of fear. I need to work on that. My fear outweighs my faith. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. My fear outweighs my faith often. And so those are things I have to work on. I'm not perfect. Don't look for perfect people. But with that being said, like I said, the people that are angry at Christians and all this type of thing and why did this happen? Ask God. I didn't. I'm, I, I'm, this is what, you know, when I questioned God and I was like, why did this happen? You know what I started thinking about? God puts in my spirit. You know, if a person, God created the heavens and the earth and he created man. He created us, human beings. Anything that if 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 I create a uh, if I make if I write a book, can you see it? If I write a book, this was a good book. Don't know much about the Bible, but anyway, if uh if I write a book, am I not in that book? Is that book not a part of me? My spirit, my soul, what I feel, what I think, what I believe is in this book. So, therefore, I'm a part of it. So, when I was talking to God and I was like, you know, why you let this happen to me? Why am I like this? You know, and I rolled up in a ball and I was doing my little crying and having my little pity party one time. And God, he revealed it to me like it because I'm slow. And you got to break it down to me like uh, there's a watch and say, like I act like I'm a two-year-old. <laughs> and God broke it down to me like that. Anything that I create or you create, it's a part of you. I'm not talking about, you know, really, too. Some bread. Your skin cells is on that bread. Let's get real, real deep. Let's go real deep with it. If you know, need some bread, unless you got gloves on, if you're making some bread, your essence is in that bread. My mother used to always say, I baked a pie for you. I put a little love in it. I put something special, and she used to scare me with that one because I'd be like, what she put in it? <laughs> My mom used to make homemade peach cobbler, blackberry cobbler. Oh, sweet potato pie, orange potato pie. Come on with it. Uh, pie pies, homemade pie pies are melting your mouth. So anyway, Lord have mercy. You know, I just, I have just eat. I had just eaten. So anyway, but God created us. So he's in all of us. He's in, in us. He created us. So you can hate all you want. Or else you can turn around and ask him. Ask the creator, whether you believe in him or not. If you got any doubt, ask him why. I, maybe you are one of the people that he will reveal an answer to. Look about all the people that was on the earth at that time. And God chose Mary to impregnate. You know, so anyway, like I said, uh, winding down, winding down, winding down. Uh, how my day went. Those are some things I've been working on. Like I said, I've been working on me. I haven't been working on me. I just told a lie again. Shut up, Jesus. <laughs> Shut up, Jesus. Shut it up. Okay. God has been working on me. He's been showing me that I'm a runner. 
Didn't know that. I run from people. I run from relationships. I was used to run church to church, but I run. In this instance, I think it's time for me to leave the church. Uh, I'm going to say this real quick because I had prefaced it a little bit before, but I'm going to say this and then I'm going to come to an end. Uh, the reason I'm leaving the church is because I was listening, not just because I was listening to a lady, but I'm uncomfortable. And it was talk, she was talking, her name is Shamika. And uh, I just happened to tune into it. I was going through my page this morning because, you know, I look for stories of something interesting to feed my spirit early in the morning when I'm uh, getting dressed. So anyway, I happened to get to her. And uh, I forget the title of it, but basically, it's on my Twitter and it's on Facebook. And uh, basically, what she was talking about, same situation with me. Anybody that been following me know that I was working a job and the guy sexually harassed me, getting out behind me and everything and all this type of thing. On the job, I was making enough money where I could have came out of debt. And so I kept kicking myself again. Like I said, I'm human. I love the Lord. I'm obedient. But I was like, God, you know what I'm saying? Why is he doing this? You know I need the money. But anyway, I didn't quit. I ended up getting fired. But anyway, her situation was the same. And she was talking about how she worked a job and it got uncomfortable. And God had kept telling her in 2010 to leave, but she kept staying and said, Turn, she talk, talks about how she was getting ready to leave and then they gave her a raise. Same thing happened to me. I started getting paid more about the product. And so I was like, Oh, yeah, it's a thousand something dollars a week. I'm ready to stay. Plus benefits, medical and dental. You know, I'm ready to stay. I was starting, the car broke down over in Indiana. I'm still trying to stay. Hard head. I'm jumping on the bus. I didn't want to see it. I was so caught up thinking that a little bit of me being honest. I start looking at that money. And I'm one of them people, I get caught up in money quick, but I'm trying to tell myself I'm not looking at the money, but really I was looking at that money. God, basically what I'm saying to sum it up is God was closing the door on that place. And when he, God will make things uncomfortable. When he makes things uncomfortable, he, it, he means it's time to go. He already has spoken to us, but we don't want to listen lots of times. The people that believe in God, we don't want to listen. And I was hard-headed. So anyway, he shed it all the way down. They fired me. And if, if you listen to her story, you'll see I, my life parallel. But one important thing, when she ended it, she spoke this. Uh, this is, this is ooh, this is so much God. <clears throat> like I said, if you don't believe in God, check this. Like I said, I fumbled through. So happened seen her. Because a lot of people pop up on my YouTube page. On my feed, through my feed. As she was talking, she said, somebody out there has been going through things for seven years. You've been in an uncomfortable situation. We, we, we ain't going to get deep into it. She said, it's about to change, basically. Why is it when I looked at the date on it, it was April. May, I was working there. All of that, Lord, anyway, believe that. I was working at the company before May when all of this stuff happened. Because my mama died, I was 16. But all of these things was happening. I should have left. When my mama died, I went into work so I wouldn't lose the job. Money hungry like a mug. But I'm trying to stay on the side. I'm trying to get out of debt. But money, I'll start chasing the money. And God took me out. So anyway, I'm not comfortable in the church that I attend. Nobody knows me. I got it's not nobody knows me. A lot of people uh a couple of people talked to me, but I think it's time to go because it is uncomfortable. And then it was a chick down there trying to run it. You know what I'm saying? It's really stuff that it's, it's really, I know her from outside the church, first of all. I, I don't really know her, but I know of her outside the church. She's not a member of the church. She comes from another church and she comes down there to the service. But that's how the devil does. And I used to think that the devil's doing it to push me out. But now I see that it's God saying leave. Because she comes down, she's down there, and that's how he does. He wants to stir things up. He wants to cause discord. You know, and it's not the first time, it's a couple of other times that things happen. So, like I said, I won't be going to church this Wednesday. I probably won't be going back. But like I said, if I get an opportunity and I hear from the past or something like that, you know, I see, you know what I'm saying? I, I hear or something like that, you know what I'm saying? The word come right now, I'm going to pray on it, you know. As far as I'm concerned, I probably won't go back, but I'm going to pray about it. And if God wants me to go and catch two buses, if he wants me to go and catch the two buses, like I said, I'm not whining. But if he wants me to catch two buses to go to the church or two buses to come back, 
And people, one guy, he did offer me a ride, but I wasn't going to jump in no truck with a guy. Mm, I don't know him, but, he, you know, he did offer me a ride. God bless his heart and all his part. But other than that, you know what I'm saying? I don't know people that would give me a ride. And I don't necessarily need a ride, but, you know what I'm saying? It would have been nice. It would have been nice to have been offered. But like I said, the church is not like the church used to be. People are not like they used to be. People are, people are selfish and self-centered and they enter themselves. They enter their own world. Some people become their own God. Yeah, I said it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to share this too, what happened today. And then I believe I'm done. I was standing on the bus stop. Well, I had to get off one bus. Uh, I had to catch a bra. I got off the Muhammad Ali bus. Let me get it real. I got off the Muhammad Ali bus. Then I had to get on the Broadway bus because I needed to go to the library. So I had to go across the street. So as I'm going across the street, you know, Kai's like, I don't care. So y'all got to be mad. I got a big coat on. I look like a big jab bird. <laughs> so I'm running across the street. And so this guy still saying, run for us, run for us. So I'm like, oh, my God, he made my day because that's how we used to be. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I'm talking about too. Black people, man, we used to crack jokes in it with each other. Man, we used to laugh. Oh, man, we had each other's back on everything. I mean, you know, I'm not just fighting. I'm talking about just fun. But he made me laugh. So anyway, and, and, and let me preface everything that I'm saying. God set me down and he set me up. Because things I hadn't seen, I'm seeing, and I'm seeing people, and I'm meeting people, and I'm participating with people. And although I was thinking that I was antisocial, let me, I'm bringing everything home. I was thinking, I'm not antisocial. I love talking. It's just that God will isolate. He had isolated me, so and he only let certain people around me. So he moves people, or he'll move me. So that's why... You know, I was thinking, okay, I'm, but let me take it back. I was listening to some people like, you can't tell so, uh, hello. So, so God's putting me where I am around people and I talk to people. I communicate with people. I'm one with people and there's things I've been seeing. So let me talk about this. So anyway, the guy cracked up. He said, yeah, run for us, run. So I went across the street, went to caught the bus, everything, you know, woo, Lord Jesus. Yes. So anyway, so I ran across the street. So anyway, I was coming back. So when I was coming, uh, I got back. I was standing there waiting for the uh, my, uh, 19th Street bus again. So I'm standing there, and like I said, I'm out from the head and everything. I'm warm. It's hitting inside my face a little bit. It's eight degrees now, I say. So it's hitting my face. So all of a sudden, you know, I was like, whoa, my feet. The only thing's cold, my feet. People compliment me, you know what I'm saying, white and black people. Because what I love, too, and God's revealing to me, too. Which, like I said, I'm not racist or nothing like that, but, you know, it's a lot of white people now that's down in the areas that people always call bad. And they wasn't, they taking care of business and everything. So, uh, me and this white lady was talking, so she had complimented me on my coat. And so, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm warm. I said, just as long as your feet keep moving. So, in the process of talking to her, listen to this now. This is God. I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm standing on the corner. You want to get deep with it? I'm standing on the corner, Broadway, 28th and Broadway, not long ago. So I'm standing there and me and her talking. So all of a sudden she said, uh, 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 we got to talk about something. I don't know. We was, you know, woo, woo, woo. And so she said, yeah, she said, uh, yeah, uh, uh, oh, I was talking and the way I wore my scarf, I had my scarf wrapped around my head because, you know, the earth was hitting in my neck. <laughs> I won't complain, but that earth was whipping me in my neck. So I, I said, yeah, I, uh, I said, yeah, I'm warm. I said, but I wrapped the scarf around my neck. I said, I almost strangled myself. <laughs> so I got to loosen it up. And she said, yeah, she said, uh, my uh, my girlfriend, she just died. She just committed suicide a couple of months ago. And I'm like, what? <laughs> For real. So I'm like, what? She said, yeah. She said, uh, mm. I'm talking about God. I'm talking about God make you, he will make you glad that you are alive. For the people that's running around talking about you don't like God, God, Chris is this and church is bad. Get out in the street and see, listen, listen. I, I don't know. I can't, I can't oh, ask God why he let certain people die and he let certain people live. Ask him why he decided to create man. If you're going to get that deep with him, ask him that. Ask him why did he create white people, black people and make people out different colors. Why do he make people slaves and make white people be their slave master? Ask that if you're going to ask everything. Stop questioning him and love him. 
It's sad when you be laying out your deathbed and all of them questions that you had flowing in your mind and hating him. Then you're laying there and they're telling you you're going to die. And it's like, ooh, can somebody go get a chaplain and bring him in here? Because now I do believe I want to live. I want to live. I don't want to die. Can you let me live? Well, you should have thought about that while you was running around hating everybody and hating Christians. Should have asked God why you was alive, why you had the health and strength in your body. So anyway, oh, Musai. So she was talking and she said, uh, my friend said she died. And I was like, oh my God, she killed herself. She said, yeah. She said, right down the street there. She said, a couple of houses down. You see down there? You know, I didn't see what she was talking about, but she's pointing. And I want to break the momentum of the story. So, hello. So I'm like, she said, yeah, down there. Said she tied a cord. Hear me. <clears throat> Listen to this. This is the people that question. Listen to this. God didn't kill her. Satan didn't kill her. She tied a cord around her neck. Ran and jumped out the window. The second story window. And hung herself while her children was in the house. And an old man was in the house. Those kids are messed up right now. Devastating those kids right now. They messed up seeing their mama hanging out a window. But the fact that she ran, she committed suicide, but she ran. Do you know how? Oh, Lord, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to woo. <clears throat> I'm talking about a God. That was a, that was a God moment. People are killing themselves is the point I'm making. People are choosing to die. And you standing there talking about, ooh, Christians are bad. Ooh, churches are bad. Ooh, this. Why don't you talk about something positive? Talking about pulling people together, white, black, purple, green, whatever. Talk about something positive. Talk about helping somebody. Why are you condoning people? What are you doing to better people? Which the person that I am, Buchanan that I am, yeah, while he was bashing, I jumped on I went through and I get on your page. Because if you post anything on man, I go to pages. I go deep with it. If it's a whole lot what you're saying and I see some corrupt stuff behind it, I will unfriend you. Click. Had you post and all that. All that's going to be done out there. And you give me two ticked off. I eliminate and reactivate, deactivate. Blow, get rid of it. Because I don't have to listen to some bull crap. You know, it's my page. I don't have to listen to things I don't want to listen to. But like I was saying, so she's talking to me and she's telling me this, you know, and I'm hurting. But you know what I'm saying? I don't try to go too religious and stuff like that. But I was like, she's seen on my face. I was like, oh, my God. So she's talking to me. You know, she was getting hyped about it. She said, not not only that, which this is not all that. But she said, even though she was dead, said two months after that, he got another woman in there. And the woman is around the kids trying to tell who could come in the house and all this and that. And she was angry. She went over and she had a fight. And two people jumped her. So the point I'm making with this is how when I'm out, people will reveal things to me. I don't need to always open my mouth and talk. People will talk to me. Just like I was telling my friend the other day, people have always trusted me. A lot of people will trust me with things they don't want to trust another person with. So they trust me with things and tell me things. I, You know what I'm saying? They just they they treat me friendly. So, like I said, the lady did that. So, the bus came and she was leaving. So, it's bad. So, then, I'm standing there. They, she got her 23rd Broadway. I'm still waiting for my 19th. So, I'm standing. I'm looking like, okay, it's me. So, woo! I'm a girl. <laughs> <laughs> woo, Lord. I'm staying in the spirit. But, hey, Lord have mercy. Some beautiful men in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm not digressing from the point because God said Absalom was a handsome man. Well, let's stay with the Bible, baby, because, honey, when I start thinking stuff, I start thinking about the Bible, too. And they said Joseph was a nice looking brother, too. So anyway, there's a fine man out there. So I'm standing on the bus stop in my big fur coat and the guy comes back and he gave me one of them smiles. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. He had on some Tim's. Mm. I'm staying scripture. Stop it. And uh, he gave me a smile. I mean, a beautiful smile. Oh, it was 
Lord Jesus, a smile. And I was like, oh, it was beautiful. You know, and to express that to you is that I wasn't sad because I was on a bus stop. And I wasn't cold. Thank God I didn't get cold. My feet a little bit, you know, start feeling it. But other than that, what I'm trying to say to you is I needed a hug. And that was my hug. I needed a hug. And God can give you a hug. A woman know, uh, can understand this a little better maybe than some men. But sometimes you just need a caress, a human touch. And they didn't physically touch me, but emotionally, my spirit was fed. Physically, spiritually, well, spiritually I was fed. Because he gave me that smile and reminded me that I'm a woman. You know? Come on, ladies. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They give you, a man can give you that, that you, you feeling like, you know, how I, I feel, I was feeling a little unattractive because I got this big coat on. I ain't trying to show out my body or anything, but I got this big coat on, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, you know, and I got all these layers of clothes on. And so, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling it. And so here it is, just the way he flashed that smell like, hmm, you, that's a lady. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, he gave me when I, hey, and I was like, woo, <laughs> yes. I look good. I must look good with all this stuff out. So it was beautiful. So I had those moments. So I'm running it in 56 minutes and then I'm getting ready to, I'm going to wait before I load it because I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to do everything six or seven. Being obedient. God is a God of order. Am I staying scripture for you? So anyway, so I'm standing there. He's standing there, you know, and he don't know what side he's street he want to be on. So then he went on over to the other side. Oh, and let me back up. I ran into uh, City Trends, two pair of boots, one, a pair of boots, one pair left out of all the boots, snow boots is laying there. So I hurried up and got those. So I now have me some rubber boots for the weather. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I don't know about the guy you serve and how you hate Christians and all that and the church people and all the church, whatever. But the guy that I serve, he had them boots on there. He had them boots on that shelf for me. It was one pair left. Yes, it was, honey. And they are beautiful. As a matter of fact, let me get them and show them to you so you know I'm not lying. Yeah. Because I'm like, I got to have them boots on. Yeah. Can y'all see them? Yeah. Look at that. I'm not advertising for the company because I don't even know what company it is. They're not no name brand boots. they just some little cheap boots. But look at that. Woo! That's warm. I'm going to wear these like they are some Tims, hey? But uh, they was cheap, too. Yeah, but they nice and rubbery all over. No snow in. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Shut up, Jesus. Because he's telling me to wind it up. He's told you talking again. I'm not going to be telling him to shut up because, you know, I fear God. My mother always say, fear the Lord. <laughs> I fear the Lord. So, you know, I'm just saying that for now. You know, but no disrespect to the Lord. I honor him. But anyway, so I'm coming to the car, coming to the end, 57. Get ready to get off here. So I'm standing there, so my feet getting a little caught. All of a sudden, I heard somebody come up and say, what time the bus come? I turn and I look down. There's a man in a wheelchair with no legs. I already feel a lot of you. I already know you're on the same page. My kid's daddy used to teach me that. He said his mama told him, said she, uh, th it was a man. He said he was complaining about his feet hurting. He said he turned around and met a man that didn't have no feet. I'm standing there talking about my feet getting wrapped, thinking to myself, my feet getting right hurt. And turn around, I looked down, and here's a man in a wheelchair with no legs. And he said, as soon as we was talking and stuff, I, he said, yeah. He said, uh, I said, I don't know what time it come. We was talking about which one I need, and he needed the same one. And so all of a sudden, we looked around, the bus came, and he said, yeah. He said, because I was standing here, and I knew you needed the bus, so I had the bus come. I, and I cracked the joke, but my feet immediately, immediately, my feet stopped hurt. I could have did a jig. And you talking about walking home? I walked home proud. I had a little dance to it. I had a song in my heart, song in my voice. And you know I can't sing. But I felt good because God will remind you if you trust him and you love him. He will remind you that you are blessed and highly favored. Maybe not for everybody. I know what he does for me. I believe in him. I believe that if you believe in him and you trust him and make him your personal savior, that he will do things for you that no other, no man, no other power can do. 
I am committed. I've been playing that, that on Twitter and Facebook, a whole lot of beautiful sound. But the one that has been in my spirit is listen. Found out R. Kelly has some right hand writing up in there. Marvin Sapp, listen. And please listen to that. I, well, I've been listening. I have to listen to everybody, don't, because everybody got their path that they, they straight some of them. But me, my path has been. So guys been telling me to listen, and I'm listening. I don't have no car. I'm sitting down. I'm catching the bus, so I'm listening. I'm listening, you know, and I'm not going to keep listening right because that's one of the things I got set in on too because I'm always whining and complaining. I almost said the other word. I'm always whining and complaining. I had to come whining. Oh, it's cold in here. Oh, the window don't go there. Oh, this. Instead of being grateful, I was ungrateful. I'm an ungrateful, pitiful so-and-so. Ungrateful was riding, so it was cold, but you was riding. Whining about it. Now what you're doing, because now you don't have it. And I thought it was the devil, but now I see God set it down. And then, like I said, I called out to the guy again. He didn't say nothing, so whatever. But like I said, it's been real, and I'm learning. And uh, when I learn whatever else he wants me to learn, then he'll let me, he'll let me ride again. God willing. If he don't, I'm still going to love him and I'm still going to get around because I got my new boots. <laughs> yes, I do. I got my boots. And uh, uh, like I said, uh, don't be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. If something is uncomfortable, listen, pray and ask God, is it time for you to move? You know what I'm saying? If it's a job, if it's a relationship, whatever it is, if it's uncomfortable. And I'm not always, everybody wants to get out there physically abused, are they physically abused, are they beating you? Not that. Sometimes you could be in the wrong relationship. If you're in a relationship with a person and they telling you, you believe in God, you go to church and you with a person that's telling you stop believing in God, stop going to church, don't be around church people. They hate God. They wish they was never, uh, 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 they never heard of the word of God. I'm not saying this guy, whoo, they saying it. If you're around a person like that, whoa, be it. I, I think that's uncomfortable. I think that's very uncomfortable. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Orange sharpens on. That's what the Bible said. So like I said, God bless you. God keep you. I will upload this. It's 459 now. Uh, I will make it, and then I'll send it out at probably 6.37, so uh, it's because it's going to take a while to load, so when it loads up and gets everything together, then I'll pop it out, but uh, God bless you, and God keep you, I pray for my family, my cousins, uh, pray, uh, keep prayer for my auntie, my aunt Ida, she's in the hospital, and uh, so uh, let's do a little social activism. Praise. See how God is. I love you. Shut up. Shut up. I was getting ready to close and he said, talk about the issue of the insurance. Okay, social justice. Let's do this real quick. My auntie ain't out. It's like 89 years old. Okay, she finally went to the hospital. They had to drain something out of her leg. So she hadn't been going to the hospital often. All of a sudden, my cousin's telling me that they have taken her part A. A Medicare part, Medicaid, Medicaid, whatever, part A. She no longer has it. So she couldn't go to one rehab place where she has to wait for a leg to heal. So she couldn't go there because she didn't have the insurance. She didn't have a certain part of the insurance. So I'm getting this information from my cousin. But basically, they had taken the car. So she had to go downtown and try to figure out what happened. So I'm like, wow. You know, so my auntie... My grandmother and my grandfather had 10 kids. And my auntie is the last one out of the 10 kids. My mother and her were the last two. My mom and dad, I was the 16. So my auntie is the last one. And so I'm not saying she's going to die, speak deaf like that. I speak, I, I speak faith. I speak healing. I'm just saying that sometimes... You know, like my cousin was telling me one time uh, when mama died, she was telling me why she was sick. And she said the doctor said that she was heart sick, you know, heartbroken, her heartbreak because a lot of people had died. And she kept going to their funeral. She was constantly sad. My cousin, she 
And uh, and you know, and I was like, what? <laughs> you know, because you heard things and you'd be like, what? Things you never heard of, and you question it, like, darn, is that? And I, but I do remember, and I told her, if one, if a, a married couple, married or people that been together a long time, live together a long time, if one may dies, the other may can grieve themselves to death, and that is that's uh that's that's in the that's you know medical studies, but uh, so you know I'm not saying that would happen with my auntie, but I'm saying that I know it weakens you when you know you're the last person. Uh, survivor out of everybody so I can imagine the state of mind plus she doesn't like live she don't like being in the hospital and right now I wish I you know God willing I get I get up there in time to visit her but like I said you know I pray that I pray I always pray my cousin sends out prayer lines but I pray that God keeps the watches over and protecting everybody in and out of, uh, of the church people that sick and shed in that can't go to church that want to go to a church that want to be in, in the presence of God I, I mean to me, I'm going to say this, too, because I keep saying I'm going to leave, but I want to say this because, and I hope that it will help somebody, and I'm going to tell you, it's revealing some things about me. I'm the type of person that I always want to be in church. I always want to be in church. It's not... Uh, the church necessary with people in it. The church could be empty. To me, what is holy is that a building, even though it be a house, a place that is established for the presence of God, for the purpose of God, for the purpose of worship, satisfies my soul. I, it makes me happy. I don't know uh, what, but that's the way I am. If I see an empty church, set in a certain area, abandoned. My spirit speaks to the spirit of that church, and I pray for that church. Uh, I've always been that way. I could tell you about a church I prayed for, just to give you a testimony. I'm going to say this. There's a church, and uh, I thought about it. Shut up, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus told me about it this morning. Uh, it said reveal it. So anyway, when uh, my mother was in a nursing home, she was in uh, a nursing home out off of uh, Lee's, Lee's, Lee's Lane out there by a synagogue uh, off of uh, Hurstborn Lane. Mama was out there at the Bridges Wood nursing home where she was. Mama was out there. Where they didn't take care of and end up, she got a uh, uh, head busted and everything like that. So they end up, I don't know what happened to it. They end up getting sued or something. Over. Not while my mother was there. We had already transferred my mother to another one. But anyway, mama was there. So me, my grandbabies, and my daughters, all of us, we would get in there. And that was a riot for that Saturday, especially on Saturday. We'd get together and we'd all go out there and visit mama. Every weekend, every Saturday or whatever, Friday, Saturday, something, we'd go out there. And we took the long way. So my daughter lived on Papa Level, off of Papa Level Road. So we leave, we'll leave Papa Level Road. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's going to mess you up. And, and, and I'm saying this, shut up, Jesus. <laughs> I'm not saying this. God's telling me to say this and reveal something to you. And it's a testimony to the people that don't have faith. And it's to the people that don't believe in Christians and, and the person that was on that page talking about fake churches. So. So as we drive down Hurstborn, we riding a long way. I picture all my grandbabies, and I got six grandbabies at the time. Me, yeah, Hezzy Cow was born. So we we all in there. Now Hezzy was Hezzy wasn't born then. So I got five grandbabies in the car. So we all in the car and stuff like that, figuring out what we're gonna eat. Should we eat before we go? Yeah, we're gonna eat before we go, and what we're gonna take to mom because we would take mom a food to the nursing home. So we riding, we coming down part. We heard a Hurstborn lane. We cross it over. What's that? Barstown Road, Taylorsville Road. And as you come, on Hurstborn Lane, to the left, used to be a church. And I think it had red doors. Red doors. It was sitting way back on the side of the road in the cut. It's the only church that was sitting there. And the church stayed empty. We were busy mama for like two or three years. The church stayed empty. 
So I kept on praying. I would pass it because some of the best the church, the spirit of the church would just hit me. And it was sitting there, it was abandoned, so much beautiful land around it. And anybody know the stretch of road? I can't give you the Pacific. But when I tell you the rest of the testimony, you'll know. Some people will know where, the, where it's at, and you'll know what I'm telling you. All to the left and right of it's a big old long stretch of road. It's a beautiful little area, but it's just it's not that many businesses right there. But the church is sitting back, way back off to the street. So I would pray all the time, God, you know, uh, God sent some people there, get somebody to get this church, you know, open the door. So I prayed, I prayed, shut up, say, say, he's trying to say, ah, oh, Janice, you know what I'm saying, your prayers didn't work. So anyway, shut up. So I prayed every time I would go and I would talk to my kids about it, you know, because at the time still in my head, I'm thinking, darn, I wish I had the money. I would love to have that. But then I looked at location, location, how would I get a lot of people that I knew, especially family, family members to come all the way out that distance to go to church. So it's right on Hearts One Lane. So we were right and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. So one day I was, uh, uh, I went to church this year, to, no, to last year. So I was in church and so all of a sudden the pastor put in the, uh, on the screen and in the bulletin, they were talking about Burnett Avenue Baptist Church is going to, uh, the pastor's going to have something at the church and the pa our pastor was going there, uh, yeah, Pastor Williams was going there to preach. So, you know, did anybody want to go? So I'm looking and I'm listening. So I'm looking at the address. So I, I'm thinking about going. So I pulled her address up. What did I pull up? Why is it the church that I have been praying for all those years is Burnett Avenue Baptist Church? I think it's Burnett Avenue Baptist Church. I know it's Burnett. They bought the church. And it's uh, it's beautiful for a little picture of it that I've seen. But this is how good God is. I... I was going to go, but I think I had to work or something. God has not allowed me to go to that church to visit. Not a bad thing, but I don't know. I don't question him, but I haven't been. But he made it known that my prayer was answered. You see what I'm saying? He answered my prayer. And uh, from what I heard, it's a, it's a beautiful church. And the pastor and everybody, you know, I think the pastor came down to, uh, to the church to visit. Over to the church where I tend to visit. But yeah, God will answer prayers. And like I said, it's according to your faith and to your belief. I believe. I believe. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus Christ crucified. I believe Jesus Christ risen. And with that being said, shut up. Jesus is completed. Jesus, please keep on talking to me. Don't stop talking to me. Because if you stop talking to me and if you close your doors on me and if you turn your back on me, what shall I do? I shall fall and I shall be woo, lost like a ship that's gone astray. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Thank you. Preach Christ crucified. Preach Christ risen. In the name of Jesus, I pray. God bless you and your family. I pray for all of the people that attended that dentist's office. And like I said, it needs to be a lawsuit. Not just the, the state getting them and taking their license. It needs to be a lawsuit for the people because now the dental work that they started on a lot of people. Oh, I didn't forget. Thank you, Jesus. The people dental work that they started on the people about them closing the dentist down. Now those people got met or dental work. That needs to be done. And just like with a car, when a mechanic messes your car up, another mechanic does not want to go behind. Other dentists are not going to want to touch those people's mouth. So those people got pain and suffering. Please get a lawsuit. Please get a petition and get you some money. Ain't no shame in my get you some money for pain and suffering. Take them to Smile Claims Court. Get you a piece of that pie because it's $24 million, And some of that money should go to the patient. Majority of the, all the money should go to the patient. Get in there. Get in there. Get you some money. Everybody get together. Because it's sad that they did that to the poor people. People that don't have. Evil. Evil. God don't like that. God's going to get you for it. God's going to get you. When you hurt his little ones, you hurt poor people like that. Take advantage of people. Your soul is going to be tormented for that. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. And yeah, you might be saved, but God got a plan for you. You're going to get a payback for that. That's wrong. 
You hurt people. When I say payback, because this society is so used to people running around shooting and killing each other. When I say payback, God will repay you. God will repay you when you take advantage of poor people and you use people like that and you do something that evil, dental work that was unneeded to the tune of $24 million, you evil and disgusting. God bless you and keep you. Ta-ta now.